Good morning, YouTube. All right, let's go right into my Appalachian heritage. We are gonna make a blueberry buckle. What's a buckle, you say? Well, it's phenomenal. <laughs> You're just gonna love it. Sweet fruit, little sweet cakey topping, and a whole lot of really good. You're gonna like this one. All right, let's cook y'all. We got a family to feed. All right, so we are gonna make a blueberry buckle. Okay, so about my special project, <laughs> I'm gonna go show y'all a picture of that in a minute. But in the meantime, go to TikTok and look for the Captain Milburn house. M-I-L-B-U-R-N, all one word. Captain Milburn, the Captain Milburn house. Okay, so blueberry buckle. What in the world is a buckle? Well, it's just another name for like a cobbler. Uh, it is a fruit dessert that, um, oh shoot. It's a fruit dessert that's got a topping baked on top. And a buckle tends to be about, about four cups of blueberries, by the way. A buckle tends to be um, more of a cake on the top instead of like a cobbler, which is more like a biscuity situation. It's a, it's a, it's a spectrum guys. It's not hardcore. It is uh, a dessert that is delicious. How about that? That's about as accurate as you can get. All right. So we've got about four cups of blueberries. That was more than that just because I didn't want to deal with measuring. So I think I'm closer to five, but you know, five ish, four ish, four cups of blueberries, half a cup of sugar right over the top of that. And to this, we're gonna add just a pinch of salt. That's kosher salt, probably a teaspoon, maybe, if we're generous. Four tablespoons, well, come on. <laughs> Actually, that was two tablespoons, sorry. A cornstarch. And then, because blueberries love citrus, they love citrus. Orange, grapefruit, lemon, we're using lemon. So that is the juice and the zest of one fresh lemon. I think there's one lonely seed left in here. Well, maybe not, or maybe I missed it. You know, just make something up. Tell them that, uh, tell them it's good luck. <laughs> they find a lemon seed. I've done that kind of thing for years. I mean, it's amazing what you can get away with. All right, so you just mix all this together. And you can use any kind of baking dish you want. The big thing is you want something that's not gonna boil over in the oven. So throw a baking sheet on the bottom or make sure that your, your dish is real generous. You can use a 11 by seven, nine by 13 casserole dish. Or you can do this. These are cute. If you're doing something fancy or family dinner or Sunday dinner, or you're entertaining, use those. They're cute. People love getting their own. In this case, I'm just using one of Granny's cast iron skillets. And now Tony is calling me. So we're going to pause at this point. So Tony can yell at me again. Okay, Tony's off. <laughs> All right, so we just put our blueberries over here in our cast iron skillet, and that's gonna sit over there by itself. All right, so over here I have two and a half egg yolks. The original recipe that I like to use, um, shoot, I always get her, always get her last name wrong. Um, she did the cake bible. Um, Berenbaum, Rose Levy Berenbaum. Uh, she also did the uh, Baker's Bible. I love her recipes. Anything, anything you do from her books will be perfect. So there's that. All right. So two and a half egg yolks, teaspoon of vanilla, a tablespoon of the sour cream mixture. You just kind of stir all that together. I'm not entirely sure why she does this. This is kind of the creaming method, but not exactly. All right. So six tablespoons of butter. It hasn't quite softened up as much as it needs to. But that's okay. I beat it already just to get it going. And to that, we're going to add half a cup of sugar, uh, half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of baking soda. 
And we're gonna let that go just until that sugar gets well incorporated and starts to dissolve. Let me scrape that down, probably three minutes total. All right, so a few minutes, a couple things here. So the first thing we're gonna do is add our eggs. And a little dab of sour cream and the vanilla. Like I said, scrape down your bowl. You want everything nice and well blended. Scraping down your bowl does that. Okay. Right back at it. We have a total of one cup of cake flour. If you don't have cake flour, use all-purpose flour, but take out three tablespoons of the all-purpose flour and replace it with three tablespoons of cornstarch. I almost never have cake flour. I almost always use that substitution trick. This is actually one of the few times where I actually really have cake flour. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put in our cake flour and the rest of our sour cream. All together, it was about a third of a cup of sour cream, start to finish, including the little bit that I put over there to help those egg yolks kind of do their thing. So you're gonna have a nice tight batter right here. Can you see what that's doing? See? Not a typical batter as in something you're gonna spoon into something or over something, but a batter nonetheless. And so at this point, you're just letting it get nice and well mixed. And here comes Bladen because he knows I'm baking. <laughs> They're actually beginning to gather my precious little vultures. Oh, wow. <laughs> vulture? Is that your vulture? I don't know what that was. <laughs> Bladen can make animal sounds. <laughs> AKA Vulture. Remember a few weeks ago when we had the real Vulture in the front yard? Yeah, that was so ugly. It was, uh, it was crazy. <laughs> Kinsley and I were sitting here doing something, I don't know. And we looked out and Vulture, front yard. And it was like, oh my God. And then I got in the oven and flew away. <laughs> All right. So we're coming toward the interior. You kind of want to spread it out. You don't want to go all the way to the edge. Because if you go to the edge, ah, shoot, look what I did. I picked up 58,000 blueberries. This is the only tricky part, getting it to kind of spread out a little bit. That's it. Gets a little fiddly. Look, I picked up a blueberry. Put him back down the bottom. You don't want to go all the way to the edge because your blueberries are going to cook and they're going to burst and there's going to be a lot of juice and forcing that juice just to go downward without allowing steam to escape means your cake layer is gonna end up being kind of gross and soggy. Oh, I see what you wanted. She wanted the mixing bowl. Uh-huh. So you don't want gross and soggy cake and you don't wanna go all the way to the edges because that gives your steam plenty of places to go. And oftentimes, not always, but often, oftentimes your cake batter The juices will come up over the side of the cake batter and you'll get this like edge layer of like juicy blueberry juice deliciousness that's just insane. And this exact same recipe works with peaches or apples, whatever you have. Just a buckle. I am absolutely charmed by those southern desserts that are crumbles, buckles, Swamps, grunts, you name it. If it's southern and has some delicious cakey thing on top, there we go. All right, 35 minutes in a 375 degree oven. Be right back.
Can you hear it? It's saying, I'm delicious. <laughs> Woo. All right, y'all. Theoretically, you let that cool down so that it's not hot enough to kill you. Like that ever is gonna happen. Mm-hmm. So theoretically you do that. In reality, you get a big old tub of ice cream and just have yourself a sit down. Um, that is all kinds of love right there.